Hello everyone! Happy New Year! <laughs> I just opened my wine. Cheers! Happy New Year! Wow, this one is it's quite sweet. <laughs> this one is called O Plus One and it's from Napa Valley 2009. So maybe I should let it breathe a little bit because, you know, it's 2009. I don't usually drink wine from the US. I usually go for those from Bordeaux. But this is a nice gift from a gentleman and I've been saving it for a rainy day. And today is the rainy day because we are back in the sea situation with a lockdown mode. So you get what it means to be in the lockdown mode. The restaurants are still functioning, but take away only after six o'clock and the venues are closed that kind of thing so yeah it's time to open this baby <laughs> and try it uh, drinking at home so you know I thought about making this video for a while because it's uh, in one way I don't want to waste your time to click on this video and listen to me whining 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 talking in a negative way for how many minutes this video may go on but secondly i also don't want to um, sugarcoat anything to pretend that everything is fine I i'm grateful for everything that i have and i'm very fortunate never been sick never caught the sea never never had anything too tough in the past two years but it's been quite an adjustment if you've been following my channel i opened this channel actually to share my travel especially to far away places this channel was inspired by my business trip to tibet and uh, unfortunately i got really sick due to high altitude sickness and i could not shoot anything i kept you know throwing up and very dizzy and i needed oxygen tanks to be on my best side so i didn't shoot that video but i try to show the nice side of touring china as a actor as a singer so that went on for like four years of my life and i shot little videos here and there because i don't want to I don't want to shoot everything because it's really um, a lot of people are very sensitive as to let me move the camera a little bit closer sorry <laughs> hopefully the the lighting is still fine and uh let me let me put this away a little bit and pour some into this cup because I don't want too many screenshots of me drinking. So I don't have a drinking problem. I, I don't really drink that much. In my previous video, I talked about loving red wine and it's true. And it's a nice wine, nice gift. And I'm enjoying it, so. Okay, okay let's have a little talk. So what happened was that I was touring all, all the time, 10 flights a month at least, and train on the train, on the go all the time. And that was really tough, but I kept saying to myself that, you know, at this age in my early 30s, I should just go for it when the opportunity is there, when the stage is there, the audience is there, I need to grab this opportunity and just go. So I went and went and went for a few years. Uh, I guess at least 200 times and that's how it rolled for me so although YouTube is a great platform but I don't want to shoot everything because people are really sensitive especially my identity as a Hong Konger touring mainland China people have their own political ideology and I don't want any any, I don't want to be caught in any of that. 
So the shit storm started in really happened in 2019 and just a lot of tear gas and bullets around. I don't like tear gas at home anymore. So I started checking into hotel rooms in other districts every Saturday. And um, I would pay like one, one, like, 1,000 Hong Kong dollars for a nice hotel room. Very small, but make sure I don't have tear gas. I don't hear the sound of, you know, gunshots. So that happened for like three weeks. And I thought if I'm paying 1,000 Hong Kong dollars, I can get a nice hotel room in Thailand, a nicer hotel room in Thailand for the same price. So I went to Koh Samui and shot those videos, which were escapist escapist and idealist because I just want to be carefree I don't want to be talking about anything too real so those videos are kind of like this dreamy you know hopeful kind of mood and although a lot of people that I met uh, in some way they, they they knew what was going on. So they would come up to me and want to talk about politi politics and the social movement at the time when the shit storm was going on. Okay, the third time using that word, what does that mean actually? Is that everything is just turned upside down. People have their own ideologies and went separate ways. And um, in this video, I would specifically, in all, all of my videos, I try so specifically to avoid politics and social movement and all that. But it's just separated us from from our usual routine. It's become, it has become this everyday tangle that we live in. It's what is what changed our lives as Hong Kongers. And, you know, I try to uh, avoid the whole subject matter because I don't want to be, I don't want any, any trouble. And uh, the way that I present Hong Kong and the way that I talk, it's like I'm censoring myself at the same time I'm talking to you. So it's quite far from what I wanted for my channel because I want it to be at least at, at least an authentic sharing of what's going on. So, and then that year was devastating, devastating, exhausting, depressing, very, very, very. So I went to Kosamui, then I went to Spain and uh, I would put every month two weeks into flying somewhere far away to escape, two weeks intense working, working every single day, back home, back in mainland China. So that went on. And then 2020, our world, your world, my world turned upside down and everything, is, everything just changed. And it's, it's difficult, it's difficult. Uh, I have not been away from Hong Kong for two years, which is fine. Hong Kong is a world-class international city and we have everything. We have luxury living here and it's very comfortable. So it's fine, two years is fine, it's nothing. However, however, the, the reality of our lives are changed and it's not as simple as putting it into an essay and telling you all what's happened. So it's too complicated. And we've been taking it day by day, but since Christmas and New Year's, during that time, you can search for what, what happened here. And it's, it's even more heartbreaking and suffocating for a lot of people. And then we're back in on the 7th, where right now we're back in this kind of lockdown mode and a lot of people actually question if this is actually beneficial to our society, if this is actually beneficial to people anymore, because shutting everything down for 14 days. And uh, I, I just feel really sad for people who are in this, at least a dozen of 
different industries losing their jobs and losing their work and you know every single day is filled with questions of, of what's going on and it's very difficult for me to uh, make happy videos and show you the reality and I wish I can do that I really wish I can do that I hope that someday in the future I can do that with all the freedom of expressions that I once enjoy and it is too sad I spent like the past so 2019 she storm and then the sea situation for two more years and now we're to 2022 so it's like three years kind of wasted kind of wasted in tears in depression in uh, hysteria hysteria and uh, Actually, many of my friends, especially journalists that I've worked with for over 12 years, you know, as a public figure in Hong Kong, I work with journalists either from entertainment section or from the main news. Many of them, they have left Hong Kong for the UK or for, for Taiwan and I actually shot a video, a farewell Hong Kong video, but I could not release it. I could not release it because I, I was too afraid that it would, uh, you know, get someone's attention and that some person would be upset and do something to me, you know. I just don't want that kind of stress anymore. So I didn't release videos as much. Last year, I kind of abandoned this channel. So if you're still watching, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so, so much that you're still watching. <laughs> I kind of abandoned this channel. Um, and also that, you know, with the art gallery, uh, thank you so much. They gave me an opportunity to teach at the gallery because they have art courses, actually. Uh, they have seminars. So they allow me to teach uh, art course there and I've MC for them a few times. And um, it's a huge transition from being on stage and being flying all the time, you know, up in the air to working uh, as an art advisor and uh, also as a teacher. So I'm grateful for those opportunities, but the core, the core of our lives, uh, the, that transition is, is, is historic, historic. And um, I cannot go into details, unfortunately, at, at this time online, on YouTube to go into details and sh tell you everything uh, because same thing I don't want any trouble so um, I think for for this year I will focus more on my YouTube and show you the bright side the positive side but I, I would not show a coat anything I think in my Mandarin Oriental like staycation video, I kind of sugarcoat it because it was too painful. The, the reality of it, everything is too painful, and um, kind of I kind of went down went down the same road as as the Koh Samui escapist, yeah, and idealist. Of course, that's more entertaining, but in the long run, I should show something more genuine and uh, authentic yeah last year i did not release that many video because in one of the videos i mentioned that i signed with a company called 17 life and i guess it's not the correct decision <laughs> to sign with them because I'm, i need to produce at least like around 20 hours of content, live content in, in Chinese, in Cantonese. And I realized like sharing every month, 20 hours of your life, nonstop, talking nonstop, it's not, it's not a, a good fit for my personality. I don't like to share that much. And also because of 20 hours of Chinese content, I feel like I'm too lazy to shoot English content for my YouTube. So uh, for this year, 
since you're still here supporting me, I'll be releasing at least two to three videos a month. I won't be that lazy anymore. It's just, you know, I, I'm, I'm more introvert, if you have not noticed yet. I'm quite introvert. I don't like to share that much publicly because my personality, I think, is too... It's such a contradiction to my my look. I guess a lot of people, they just want to see me talk and, you know, my, my top goes down and down, like... <laughs> and the clothes, you know, you cannot keep talking without taking your clothes off. And um, people would expect that. <laughs> and I'm not that young anymore, so... I hope to have a platform where I can show you different layers, different perspective. Yeah. <laughs> and um, also, my, some of you actually asked if I got married or something or met someone. So maybe that's the reason why I didn't release that many videos the answer is no i'm still single and it's so pathetic it's so pathetic because i'm such a nerd i'm such a nerd i have not been on a date for some years and uh, it's so embarrassing <laughs> actually my parents are like uh you're too picky because my parents have this un my parents they have this misunderstanding and i cannot solve it they're like, you're always looking for a more uh, wealthier guy, you know, da, da, da. but it's not true. It's, I actually pay for speed dating in the past few months, but the guys will not come up and talk to me. So, so crap. And I, I have to go to their side, sit with them, and they still don't want to talk to me. So, and I asked for introduction. I would ask, like, go around and ask people, do you have someone to introduce me? Do you have someone to introduce me? And then these men would throw themselves at me and they're still, they're already married. They're already married. And then, or, or they would track me to come out and then they're like, I have someone to, to introduce you. And is he single or is he married? Oh, he's single. He's single. I would go out and that guy turned out to be married. <laughs> And um, it's just too much. I don't know why people do that to me. Married, but also very old. By very old, I mean like gray hair, 70, very old looking. I mean, 70 is not that old, but uh, if you come to me with a head full of gray hair, I feel a lot of pressure. I feel like if I say yes, then every day I wake up, I need to take care of an elderly. So <laughs> I just don't want to keep in touch because like, I have a lot of pressure from what's going on in our society already. I just don't want anything at home that is too dramatic or too drastic, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm still single. So I feel shitty as well, like a shitstorm and shitty. Sorry if I'm too vulgar. <laughs> I don't usually do this, but I feel like, you know, if a lot of people had the courage to just leave their family, leave their hometown and migrate somewhere else to another country. Like I have general, generalists, sorry, I've been drinking. I have reporters, I have reporters who have left Hong Kong for the UK. And they can't even speak English that well. So they are like a lot of courage to do that, to leave your parents, to leave your hometown, hometown and just move somewhere else. Like if they, they have the courage to do that, at least I can be more authentic and tell you what's really going on. And um, so the video release explanation for last year was not because I met someone, met some guy, got married, not, none of that. And not because of my workload at the art gallery. It's just that I have not found a way to be authentic and to sh to tell you the reality of what's going on. Because I was too concerned if you guys would quit if I tell you the painful situation and the truth. Yeah. 
hopefully you can still listen you can still hear my voice my voice is getting low <laughs> getting lower and lower because i I'm, I'm, I'm afraid <laughs> So last year, 2021, I did spend some time on useless people. They, there were a few of them. They are from high society and they have apparently, they seemingly had good, good connection. So they came to me and asked for help for like charity projects or for commercial projects. And I did help them. I did spend some precious months helping them and uh, they had my help and they left. So this year, I'm not gonna care if that project is not close to my heart and you can take it or leave it. I, I don't care anymore. Cause last year after like the pandemic 2020, I thought, okay, so after a year of staying at home by myself, this is good time to mingle and make new friends and make new connections. So they came to me asking for help and I would help them. But in return, I didn't get the appreciation that, that I deserve. I don't want to talk about money all the time because sometimes when you're stepping out and trying to make new contacts, new connection, new friends, uh, money is not always on my mind. It's how that friendship would be mutually beneficial to one, one another. If I can learn something from that person and if that person can, you know, get something helpful for me. So, but last year was looking back, I spent quite some months, quite some precious time helping them. Didn't get any reward but we live in a big city so these kind of things are always happen if you live in the big city people are not so genuine all the time so this year i would rather spend more time making videos for you guys because you guys stick around stick around not like them they didn't stick around so or they just want to be they just want to be in a shallow place with every everyone because you know wealthy rich people rich people they have their own psychological problems and i realized that it's too it's such a freak show with all these like high society high society people if you have if you have not seen um, crazy rich asian they are like that they're like that crazy rich asians and um at that time, I thought, wow, you're from old money. You're from such a high society position. So if you came to me and asked me to help you for a project that maybe I should consider and help for a little bit. But then once they know that you are willing to help them, they just give you more work and work and work to do. And I, at that time, I was like, okay, bring it on. I've been through it. Anyway, because I, you know, before showbiz, I work as a film executive, so I, I'm used to working a lot anyway. So fine, give it to me, give it to me. But, you know, during Christmas, I really thought, wow, Christmas, you guys did not say any thank you or express any, you know, festive seasonal greetings. So, you know what? Cut. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my new year resolution to see you guys more on YouTube and to see those people less and uh, Hopefully this year Just waiting for this sports car to go by Hopefully this year I will meet a new partner and I have not been out on a date for years. So 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 embarrassing So 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 embarrassing. I don't know why all these married men come to me like would you advise kindly advise down, be down below like why would you ask me to come out and meet your friend and then that friend turned out to be someone else's husband and 
maybe in big cities it's, it's like that it's very sex and the city by the way sex and the city and just like that what the hell is going on you know i thought that you know seeing those women would make me happy at least cheer, cheer me up a little bit but it's just it's it's awful it's awful the new series and i i watch every episode since since the debut in 2000 in 1998 and now it's just it's too woke is how you say it too woke and i can't stand it anymore it's awful 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 why would they kill off big and make carrie run around the city as a single woman anymore it's just too it's too awful to watch so um uh, well done kim on not returning to the show but um yeah hopefully this year i'll find love I hope so. It's too. It seems too too much to ask, because especially in lockdown mode, that I think the next fourteen days, I'm I'm basically gonna sit at home like this in front of my fireplace with my candles, drinking wine, so eating cheese. I have some nice conde and a ham. So I'm a, a very lucky girl, but very lonely. So if you guys flash back to my Valentine's days, like eating Vietnamese noodles, I'm still like that. And it's like three years. What the hell? It's like, you know, went to all these speed dating events, I pay cash. But I guess people, when they see me, they, they, they think I, uh, I'm there as a trick or something like the the company hired me to to track them or something but anyway hopefully this year things will change and uh please stick around thank you so much for sticking around i kind of abandoned my channel last year uh due to helping friends who are no longer my friends so that's a wake-up call you know i've been very careful with very selective with you know making new friends but i still got scammed in a way um people would come and ask for help but actually those projects uh once they're done they're done and it's no good i would rather make videos that are permanent on youtube for you guys so thank you for spending this first lockdown evening with me and i'll see you around thank you for your support and um happy new year to all of you especially those who send me emails uh wishing me a happy new year 2022 here we go uh i hope I, I sincerely hope that this is our final final lockdown in hong kong we cannot do this anymore we have to find an alternative and I don't want to get into the, to the politics and the social movement, any, any of that. It's just, it doesn't really make sense anymore. It doesn't really make sense the third year going around. This is like a never ending cycle. And it's just, we have to find an alternative. And so thank you for watching and spending the night with me. Good night.